All right, we're live. I'm going to drop this on the podcast room. Oh, I never muted myself. Ha ha, professional, professional. I, I forgot to mute myself. Oops. So, hey guys, y'all all right tonight? Frey and I are both eating because I'm stealing the last two pieces of my onion and olive pizza. All right, so we don't have a lot of folks. Lafayette was supposed to show up, but uh, they're actually doing what they really like to do to relax, uh, which is the subject of today's uh, podcast, is uh, they went camping. Moose, Knox, and some other folks went on a bachelor party and stayed in a cabin up in Arkansas and just fished and enjoyed themselves, which sounds amazing, personally. And... Uh, Frecky slash Claire is not relaxing because she can't relax right now because wedding. Like, it is... She's stressing. She's stressing because uh, some some things have to come from India for the wedding. And we have a, we have a shipment or a shipment time crisis. But... Oh man, time crisis. What was it? You had to save the president's daughter? Or am I? No, that's uh. That's right. I miss light guns. So. Uh, let's see, before we get started, uh, we are having anything, uh, donated to us during this quarter between now and, uh, June will be donated to, to One Tree Planted, which, uh, I believe was it for every dollar that's donated, they plant a tree. And, uh, so if you can donate to that, please do, uh, more trees, more oxygen. We all live better and have cleaner air. And also as a woodworker, you plant more trees so that later on you can use them to make furniture and tables. So conservation and responsible use. Uh, and with that said, uh, the subject of this, very, very chill. 100% no questions written down this time by me. Uh, bonus roundtable is just what do we do to relax? So I will start with Spence because I know my wife has probably got a spoonful of bread bowl soup in her mouth. I can 
I can dig that. Emily and I used to always go to Restoration Parks in the afternoon, or at least do it twice, but now that Restoration Park is, instead of us being in Monroe and being able just to go to West Monroe, now we got to go all the way through Monroe and West Monroe to get to it, but we would usually do, what, two, three laps around M? But I like that one because even though you're you're no more than an eighth of a mile from the interstate, the furthest the furthest the trail gets, I think you can kind of forget that you're in the middle of a town, and just getting out in that little bit of nature like that. Same thing with Caroli. Unfortunately, I don't get to them as much as I want because. Uh, our work, Emily and I's work schedules have gotten, I mean, a lot of times it's reversed from each other, isn't it, baby? She's eating. <laughs> uh, but when she's, when I get home, she goes to work a lot of times. So then, and if I took Vincent on a walk somewhere, I would be dragging him after a little while because he'd be like, I'm bored. <laughs> But nature is a nature is a really great way to to clear your head and get things out. It's uh it's why I'm really jealous of Knox and Moose getting to go up to a state park and just all they did was fish and grill stuff for three days. No, I mean uh Topher Topher, Bosch, and I are trying to set something up like that because Topher uh, Graves been on a a kick for camping recently, and we're we're gonna find out if Bosch is outdoorsy. He might be outdoorsy. It'll be fun because this is true. Very very true. Uh, is there anything else you like to do to relax, Spence? You know, just, you know, just cooking something and then that you are just in the zone to basically just, you know, that you are making good food for yourself, your family or friends. And then that everybody is just like looking at you and just like, we are going, we can, we just do can that now, then that can we just like duplicate you so that way that we can have our personal chef whenever we need it. And then it, it is an honor to always just, you know, have just the kind thing said. But I think that it's just the, honestly, that the joy of just basically making food and knowing that it is delicious. That is just basically that that sense of nirvana you always feel. I, I, I cannot agree with that one because usually when I'm, if I'm cooking... Like, you cook actually really, really good stuff. You, you cook really good food. I, I I am the one who cooks the everyday mundane meal that might have come out of a box that you just add the meat and water to while you're mixing it. If I'm trying to make anything fancy the couple times I've tried to do that, I am, I'm usually stressing because I'm trying to figure out um, how to do it exactly. Like my well, my knife skills are atrocious. Mine are too, believe it or not. And then that that's the thing. It's just basically because me growing up, I was still you know like you know like a kid in the video games and such. Still am, but my mom and dad would be like, because then that they then that they would always call me from basically up 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 that they would call me up front from my room. 
room and then that they would be like why don't you just hang out up in at the kitchen with us i would just be there with just whatever pokemon or super mario or else any zelda that had got like released for that the game boy advance or just whatever and then i would just sit there and then talk to them but i would also take in all of just take in all of the smells of the food food like watch my mom and not that, like watch my mom and dad cook especially that whenever that my dad dad was would, would just basically grill he would just basically have me actually clean actually clean out his old barbecue pit you know we, we you know with just the wire brush dustpan broom because it was a lot of charcoal bits of oak wood in there and then it's just how i just learned how to cook and plus all and plus they're always like watching the food channel being like i want to try that Yeah, Em and I, uh, back before we stopped having cable, uh, I think we had it on Food Network 90% of the time. We watched so much Food Network. There's, okay, let's be honest. There's a lot of cooking shows that if you go back and you rewatch them now, it's like this is, this is like the ASMR before there was ASMR. It's just the people are not whispering the recipe while they make it. Which I will say is a is a very big improvement is just talk normally while you're cooking it. But it, it was always like watching somebody do that, especially when they know what they're doing. Mm-hmm. That's it's kind of a little bit of a comfort. Oh yeah, like absolutely. I mean that it's just basically, you know, that if that you are having a get together or so, and then that you are watching that that one person that knows what they're doing, doing something, then that you are just going to be like, oh man, that that's going to be good. That that's going to be good. That like, it is kind of, it is kind of like somebody is basically coming in and then they're like, hey, I brought some Mac ribs. And then you're like, oh, that that's McDonald's brand. But you see somebody that basically get, that you know, that they actually get, that they actually get like a lamb rib, rib or any other kind of rib or something like that. And then that they in the in the den that they essentially make a pulled pool just slow just now to just a slow simmer rib sandwich. And then that and uh and the den that they also make their own homemade brioche spread, you know that that is gonna be good. Emily is actually really good at making bread. But she... what about y'all? What what do y'all like to do for relaxation? I will let my lovely wife go. I don't really do anything productive. I just, what do you do when you want to relax and chill, baby? Most of the time now, it's vegging and watching TikTok. <clears throat> I don't read like I used to. I need to go back, try and get back in. Reading's all I used to do. But I also didn't used to have friends, so that was all I really had time to do. <laughs> but... He would probably say I'm on my phone way too much, but at the end of the day, I'm usually just kind of sitting down watching stuff on my phone. Lately, been trying to watch more stuff together, though. Like Clarkson's Farm on Amazon. That is such a good series. Hmm. Uh, do you have Prime, Spence? Yeah, I have Prime. Yeah, it's uh, Clarkson's Farm. There's two seasons. Uh, Jeremy Clarkson that used to be on Top Gear. Uh, mm -hmm. that also did Grand Tour. Uh, he owns a farm in the Cotswolds, which is mm -hmm. southwest England. And it's just, I mean, he doesn't know what he's doing, and he took direct control of it because it's kind of his retirement. Yeah. But it, it does a really good job of highlighting how hard it is to be a small, independent farm. Even if you come in with money, like it, he did. Like the, like excuse me, if he has to spend a half a million pounds, he doesn't like that, but he can. Uh, he has access to that because of he used to do Who Wants to Be a Millionaire working for the working for BBC. Yeah, he, for the last forty years. Oh, so. Yeah. 
he's but then there's other people who were not rich celebrities that have farms that are like literally struggling to pay bills because uh at th- th- this and I'll say this and then I guess we'll move on to something other than the show was uh in the United States if you have a badger problem like if you have an invasive like predatory species that could bring a disease onto the farm you shoot the badger y- you shoot it and you, mm-hmm. you and you burn it um badgers in the UK are a protected species you literally cannot kill them without being sent to jail and given a massive fine. To it, it could be what was it, eighty thousand pounds or forty thousand pounds, eighty thousand U.S. dollars per, per badger, and up per to up to five months in prison. But they, they and the can, badgers currently have an outbreak of TB. Yeah, in that, England, and they had and that can jump to cows from badgers. So that's been a big part of. The season. It's just kind of funny to see him not know what the hell he's doing, trying to figure out how to run a farm. So that he's just basically just playing Stardew Valley, but IRL. Yeah, kind of. Yeah, pretty much. And th- there are some real consequences when he does it. He also has a Lamborghini uh, tractor, so that just that, that shows how much Wait. he knows about what goes on. Lamborghini. Lam- a la- it is a Lambo tractor. The Lamborghini does make farm <sighs> equipment. It's massive, and he can't fit it in his barn. It, it is. It's extra. It is so it extra. Was, That's it was hilarious. Too extra. That's it, too it's extra. Jeremy Clarkson. That's kind of his mo. So, uh, but we would do that, and there's. I need to go. I need to start watching Owl House more. Because just watch TV. I haven't. I don't sit and watch anything on the TV anymore like I used to. During but. college, that I never watched TV and then that some guy, some guy, my one now that like one of my older coworkers at the time was just like that. You don't watch Netflix? Are you sane? I'm like, we yeah. We didn't have Netflix until we either. left college. Until right. we moved into our own place, we didn't even have Netflix. I uh. So we got a Roku, actually. I uh, I watch TV all the time. I used to. And again, it used to be that TV didn't just play marathons of the same damn show for six hours. But I like to paint stuff, but I haven't really been doing many paintings lately. I need to work on these little sticks that I have to put in the garden. They're like little snails and mushrooms, and I'm going to write what each bed has in it. Uh-oh. They're really, they're really cute. Good. Bottom from Dollar Tree. Nice. Dollar Tree has stepped up their arts and crafts game, man. Mm-hmm. They've stepped it up enough. I don't mind that they're not a dollar anymore. <laughs> I mean, even, even the stuff that you can buy for four or five bucks is still mm-hmm. pretty darn good deal for five, six bucks. You just got to go to the correct ones that actually have it in stock and in that, and then that you don't get shot. No, yeah, well, yeah, yeah, that means you don't want to lose. Right? Here's the deal. Supposedly, there are Dollar Trees that have ho- have polyhedral dice. Yeah. I've, I've not seen it. I have it. seen it. I, I have seen it. I have not seen it in an actual store. I've seen people talk about it online, but I have not seen them in the store. The one over by our house is actually has really good stock of arts and crafts stuff, and the one by the mall is pretty good most of the time. Yeah, most of the time. Sometimes their arts and crafts is a little scarce, but the one by our house usually keeps it pretty well stocked. Yeah, that that is the fairly recent one, I believe. I mean, they pop up like daisies, so. Not as bad as Dollar General's. Or else Ollie's. Mm. Uh... No, I haven't been don't, to Ollie's in a minute. Don't hate on Ollie's. I go in there every time I take Vincent to get cards. No, no, no. The one time, you know, I I told you I have to check out Ollie's. The one time she went in there, a couple of freaking ratchet ass white ladies started fighting and throwing shit. And she was like, nope. <clears throat> she turned around and walked back out. That That is. That, that she is, has not been is, back since. That is great. Ollie's had kind of scare me because of the fact that you got alternate universe Albert Einstein. If that he <laughs> basically, if that he just basically would just like he did that, you know that he didn't do science. He went into business. 
That's funny. That's really funny. Also, every t- I know the sign is talking about the rugs at the back of the store, but the fact the sign above the rug says mm. Orientals and has him in a tank, <laughs> I'm like, what the fuck were they thinking? At least he's not like wearing a, at least it's not like a racist caricature. Like, but. at least they didn't give him like squinty eyes or something, but I was still like, the first time I saw that, I was like, the fuck? Like, you couldn't have just put rugs or floor cover, something, orientals, really? <laughs> we need, it's one of those, if we need to have a conversation. I mean, really, it's 2023, people, come on. But, right. <laughs> but what do you do, hun, even though I already know the answer? Uh, I, I, I do a couple things. The, the biggest thing I do to relax is listen to podcasts or audiobooks. Like if I'm walking, if I'm mowing, if uh, if I'm going around like that, I have a podcast on with my headphones. Uh, mostly because mowing, I used to hate mowing, but it's it's a mind dumped activity. For two hours, everybody's going to leave me alone, and I can listen to an audiobook. and I get my steps in, and then my yard looks better. Uh, mm-hmm. I really like walking through nature walks, mostly because. I can then remove myself from a whole lot of folks. And it does the exact same. It does the exact same thing as listening to the podcast and mowing or walking around the neighborhood for me is that um, sometimes it's a little too peoply. Mm-hmm. Uh, as much as I love people, well, specific people. Uh, but there's sometimes I, I teach for a living. So I'm, I'm in front of students every day. I'm, I got 70 other coworkers. So there is no way, even if I had my planning period, which uh, I, I sold it this last year so I could get extra money. But if, even if I was to have a planning period, I would still have someone interrupt me. There, there wouldn't be that moment of quiet to relax. And uh, it's kind of the same thing for when I would work, which is one of my other things I do for relaxation is I go into the shop and I make stuff. And again, it's, it's kind of solitary. I get to do it. And it's enjoyable. You hermit. <laughs> yeah, a I mean, little bit. That, I mean, that, that, it's like nothing like wrong with that. I mean, then that I know with just all of the cosplay stuff that I have been working on and stuff that it is that 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 there is nothing like that. The feeling of basically that you are just taking a Dremel or a sandpaper or what or just like what have you, and then that you're just. Go and get a cross foam, foam or anything like that. It could be foam, wood, or whatever. And then that, you know that the best part about it is after that, after that you are done for the day, you get that you get to take a nice relaxing shower. That is the best part at the end of it, because then you feel like refreshed, relaxed, and plus that you feel productive because you have made something. I miss doing cosplay stuff, but for me. I need to be doing it for a specific reason. Like, when I used to cosplay at cons, it was... I made the cosplay for the con. And I never really did it outside of that, except when we did steampunk. But I feel like if I don't have, like, a convention or something I'm working towards, I'm like, why am I even doing this? (laughs) But that's me. Like, I don't... Lots of people just do it for fun. I'm like, I need, I'm never going to wear this anywhere, so I don't feel like I need to be making it. I mean, that the funny thing is about the one that I am working on actually started off as just a, as just, as just a, a uh, loose uh, bet between me and Nasa. Basically, that I had basically just joked around, and then that I basically said that it was like during like an early combat in session, session that, that, that that we can had and that i am like if that you kill my character next session i will show up as my character with a brand new character and just stare at you the entire time <laughs> that the entire time to make you feel bad and then she's like bet and i'm like okay but so far that that hasn't happened not that i know of so <laughs> 
Oh, I have been playing Pokemon Scarlet. Oh, nice. You I, how do you enjoy it? It's good. It, my parents got it for me for my birthday. Um, because my parents are awesome. <laughs> um, it's so big. There is it is the map is so freaking massive, and I haven't played a Pokemon game. I I played let's I started playing Let's Go Eevee with the Chaos Muffin, because he got it. And mm-hmm. it's that's basically a rehash of you know blue and red. Right. It's it's an updated version of blue and red, and it's fairly a lot of the mechanics are almost like Pokemon Go, really, especially when it comes to catching Pokemon. <laughs> and I haven't played a new proper Pokemon game since pff, I don't even know. So I feel like my strategy of this Pokemon's strongest, I'm going to send it out, it's going to kill things, does not work as well in this day and age of battling Pokemon. <laughs> I've never been good at strategy in Pokemon. It's like, okay, this thing is... Well, you, you cut you cut out. Yeah, my, my plate hit it. Like, this, this one's leveled up the most. I'm going to send it out and hit that thing. Oh, it's fire and leaf? Well, my leaf Pokemon's stronger anyway, so who cares? And I like always, I always take damage attacks. I almost never take status changing attacks. That's always been my habit. Now I'm like, I might need to rethink the way I do this. <laughs> but it's really fun. I really enjoy it. It's uh, I can tell I've been out of the Pokemon game a long time playing it, but uh, no, I've I've been enjoying it a lot. There's so many Pokemon to catch now, though. And you only only being able to carry six with you kills me because I'm like I want to use this one, but this one's already stronger. I don't know what to do. That, that that's something that I, I'll go on. I was going to say, say that's when the grind is real. I mean that video games also used to be my my re, my relaxation and stuff, especially like. Like just getting just a bunch of friends together and playing like Super Smash Brothers and just having like uh, fighting game tournaments just for fun, you know that we will all just basically just be like playing just Tekken or Street Fighter or something. Ours, you, or ours something. used to be Rock Band. We, put, we used to play. We used to get all to get together and play Rock Band. That if, yeah, if, I mean, if y'all if y'all ever put me on guitar, that was not relaxing. You, it's like the guitar hero. Yes, I do. I mean, that I picture you more, more, more either as bass or as vocals. He did vocals most of the time. I had got slapped on vocals without, without even just, then that they were just like, I can't sing, just give it to Spencer. And then I'm like, okay. Turns out that I was pretty decent at it, even though that I wanted guitar. I... Did, I sometimes did vocals. I almost always did guitar, and I would do um, the drums. Oh, Guitar Hero needs to make a comeback. I know that there are some I love VR Guitar games. Hero. Oh, I love Guitar Hero. The first time I watched Hewitt play, I about pissed myself laughing. Yep. H- Hewitt has. I I love this man with all of my heart and soul, but he has no rhythm whatsoever, and he damn well knows it. I do not. I also don't have pitch. So while we're on this subject, let's because uh, we've done and some of the other ones we've done the rapid fire type stuff. So I'll mention, uh, I'll mention something, and y'all tell me like what was the one, the first one that comes to your mind that you remember playing to chill. Out, like so, game give me one, se- give me one sec while I get up. I'm gonna the rest of my bread bowls kind of gross. I'm gonna throw it away real quick. Okay. I re- I regret and apologize for spending the extra dollar to buy it. Do, 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 do. Banter. We are bantering. Bantering. Banter, banter. Yes. Words banter. and stuff. Words. It, it, okay, it, nasty yes. food is in the trash can. Okay. Okay. Uh, so, so, we'll go through, I'll ask, like, uh, we'll do the first one, Game Boy game. Original Game Boy? Any, the original Game Boy or the Advance. Super Mario, six gold coins. Oh, good one. Uh, I would go with... Uh, 
I would go with Pokemon Special Pikachu Edition, Pokemon Yellow. My brother had that one. Uh, mine on the original Game Boy that was the game I would play and relax was Kid Icarus. I played so much Kid Icarus. We had Super Mario Six Gold Coins, which I never, I never beat it. I would get to, the, I could never get it all the way to the end. And uh, we also had Kirby. I believe it was the original Kirby on that. And then the one I probably played the most was uh, Pokemon Silver. Donkey Kong 94 for the Game Boy, which then that it was basically the puzzle expansion to the original Donkey Kong arcade game to huh. where then that they to where then that they basically do that the whole fake out of that you just think that the whole game is just going to be like that the first four levels like no that it is like a 60 level game of all of these puzzles to where that you have to collect the key key to basically un to basically unlock the door to like the next level and, and such because Donkey Kong had just ran away with like Paul with had ran away with Pauline. Pauline and then that it is just it is where that like Mario can do like these handstands that this weird ass triple backflip thing and oh, that... I did have that one. Now that I, now that you mention it, I remember having that one. Yeah, that it was a very fun game. That very yeah, the, the backflip is what did it for me. I remember that. Yeah, and then that whenever Mario had basically fell on his head because that it is actually a way that you can actually have Mario save save himself from just like a high high fall. But it it was just so fun. See, uh, the an anime that you love to watch when you just want to chill and veg out. Sailor Moon, Detective Coney, Mushishi. That is a very chill anime. That is a very chill. Anime. Uh, Mushishi was when Emily and I we used to have the Funimation channel through Comcast because, mm -hmm. and that's when we first started watching. Then that ended, and then it popped up on Netflix for a while. No, Mushishi we got from Brian. Oh, that's right. Uh, that is like the most mellow. Like, there's not... And a, it's Travis! It's not a ton of action. It's not a ton of anything. It is just, it's got this like beautiful melancholy attitude. And you could just sit there and literally with a cup of tea and watch it. Uh, same thing with the Sakura Saga that uh, mm -hmm. him and I uh, watched. No, uh, that's not what it was called, was it? It was... I thought it was Sakura Saga. It was where, uh... I know the one you're talking about, and that's... it was Sakura... It was, it's... uh... It, it, no, it was the, the main character became, like, the idol of this small Japanese rural town, like, to try to encourage mm -hmm. people to come out to it. And it was literally, like, her and, like, three other ladies trying to draw people into uh, the town. like, And the whole thing, like, the town had taken the Chupacabra as their mascot because somebody... Uh, no, I'm trying to think, because you're, you're mixing it with Zombieland Saga. The, the name I am. Zombieland Saga is not a bad one either, but that's not a really chill, relax anime. Oh, uh, Top Team Epic is, like, just stupid shorts, and it's ridiculous. I'll, yeah, that's... Go ahead, Spence. That that new camping one that I had heard about that 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 one looks super chill to uh, watch. The the cooking one? No, that the camping one that they got a whole anime about camping and such. It is very very good. Now I also liked watching uh, Uzaki Chan wants to hang out, and that is I will say this that is the first anime I have I preferred to watch it subbed rather than dubbed that was the first one i rather watch subbed than dubbed because some of the voice choices for the english cast are just weird so um also uh let's play or new game new game it's about this girl that after she graduates high school she goes to work in a game development company that's all run by women 
and it's just a slice of life anime and there's two seasons of it and it's just it's so good i love slice of life anime because they're so mm-hmm. simple they don't have to be action-packed it's just slice of life is just for some reason so entertaining to me because it's just that chill chill vibe to slice of life it's just basically like our lives but turned up to 11 with just more comedy and antics and it seems like everybody's just having a good time it, it is most of those slice of life uh style animes almost follow the newer model of american sitcoms and the the same type of story strategy and progression because you know a lot of those old sitcoms like that there wasn't really a massive overarching storyline other than when they decided to go to disney like almost mm-hmm. all of them ever did or what was a uh, cedar uh, seed or something I can't remember. Emily might. That's a Midwestern park, I think. Oh, what was it? Cedar Ce- Point. Yeah, Cedar Point. Like depending on where the uh the, the series was set, like there's always the obligatory amusement park travel. Uh, let's see another good anime that we watched. Remember the freaking name of this one? It's gonna bug because I couldn't remember it at one point either, and I had to find out. Uh, let's see, there was, I can't remember the name of it, but there's most of what we've been watching anime-wise. Soccer Request! There we go. Emily found it. <laughs> I, it just popped in my head. Uh, my apologies. Let's see. Uh, favorite, or the, the streaming TV show that you would go to, to just, just chill. Uh, like I, I will say this i could put parks and rec on in the background and just let it run and chill see my problem is i can't binge like you do because you can get stuff done when you binge i can't i need to pay attention to what i'm watching likewise then that that the although that it is either a tie between sailor moon or else pokemon that I just have on end at the background if I am doing something because I, I am more of a YouTube person than like a streaming service person because I, I have that same issue of like that I get too investment vested and I will just sit there and watch something. Like it could be I could have seen something a million times. Vincent could be watching a goofy movie for the 50th time. I've seen it 500 times and I'm still going to sit and watch it. Now, the the other thing I'll do is I'll put on uh, nature documentaries or national park documentaries. Yeah, mm-hmm. you do do that. You you got to where you almost had none more to watch anymore. Yeah, I've had to stop so that I can have like another built up glut of them so that a Saturday that I don't have to do something necessarily, I can just like it, the next time my son goes to visit my parents, that Saturday might just be me vegging out watching TV. Like just streaming something like that and maybe painting minis because that would be all right. I can just do this and chill. Uh, okay, since you mentioned this, Vince, what YouTube channel is your go to for relaxation? I would say it is Summoning Salt. He is basically a speedrunner documentary that it is kind of like very, very interesting about basically listening to those world record progressions of like all of these games and stuff that we had grew up you know like that the whole blindfolded punch out world record that that was a very interesting documentary to listen to mine is uh uh, the two channels i will go to to just completely relax is i will watch uh my self-reliance which is uh, a Canadian guy. He's building his own off-the-grid cabin and has a ton of acres out in the middle of the woods, and he's trying to do, like, self-sustaining life. And he doesn't really talk in his videos. It's just him doing the work. And then the other one is Jimmy Duresta, because Jimmy Duresta has a whole lot of videos that either he does voiceovers or he doesn't say anything while he just works on what he's making. And even though Jimmy a lot of times now uses CNCs, 
which I can't mm-hmm. fault him. If you have the money to get a CNC, use it. It is a tool. Use it for what it is. I mean, I'm not coming to your channel to watch you make things the way I would need to make them. I want to see you make something cool while I sit here with a cup of tea in the morning on Saturday or Sunday and just relax. That's, that is literally all I want because it's just watching the process is just great to me. It, it's, it's relaxing. Oh yeah, absolutely. Like also another one, two of them for me will be Nerd will be Nerd Forge and then Kumi cosplay. Oh, but they're both really good. Oh yeah. Like uh the what Kumi does with like uh that bedding foam. Mm-hmm. Is is ridiculous. What cha- what YouTube channel is your big uh chill vibe, Emmy? Marky Blyer? <laughs> Right. Okay, works. if I if if I'm working on my computer, it it is Markiplier, and I will just put on one of his even one of his old videos. Like when we first started, when I first started watching him when he was doing the original Five Nights at Freddy's, I'll throw those on sometimes. Um, but sometimes it's not a good thing to do because then I start watching it again. <laughs> but during lockdown. Hewitt and I kind of discovered theme park channels. Like, there's stuff like Disney Food Blog or DFB Guide, and they post multiple videos a day about going to Disney World and tips and tricks and stuff like that. But we found uh, other channels that talk about theme parks and their history or, um, you know, old, old TV. I know, I know, I know. I heard the beep. But our old TV shows that they actually go into how they were developed and how they happened and like, uh, what's what's the one with the British guy? I'm, I'm drawing a blank. Uh, uh, ex. Expedition. Yeah, uh, Expedition Extinct, Expedition uh, Theme Park. Yeah, like he'll go into theme parks and rides and how they were developed and what happened to them, where they are now. And uh, then there's two others that we really got into. The only problem is we watched them so much during the pandemic that they stopped posting as much. <laughs> um. What are the other two that we watch so much? Uh, Yesterworld, which just updated, and... Uh, yeah. Oh, did they? Yeah, they just did. Um, for the first time in months. And then uh, the one with uh, Purger. Yeah, well, would that be ab- uh, Abandoned? No, no, we do watch Abandoned. That's a dude from Canada. Oh, Purger, Purger yeah. Um, uh, that I... does the... Uh... He started doing he does... more like... He does, like, now full full length documentaries now that take months to make. Yeah. And then we we watch Abandoned and he did a really, really good documentary on Jazzland down in New Orleans. Like it actually got released on uh Prime. And we we pay we bought it and paid for it because it it was really, really good. But mm. I I always found stuff about an abandoned places really interesting. I'm a big chicken, and I couldn't do urban exploring, but I think it's really cool to watch. <laughs> Have you ever watched a one named, like, Explore with Josh? Because then if that is somewhat of a guilty pleasure of mine, that he had basically had to, like, went to, like, that this one village that was, like, affected by Chernobyl, and then that the locals were giving him and his crew to look alike, like, y'all need to get the hell up out of here with y'all's cameras and stuff. Like that, that it would just straight up out of like some Monster of the Week, Resident Evil type stuff, and then I'm like, oh my god, that this is gonna be good. To be fair, if it's Chernobyl, they're probably like, you a dumbass, get out. <laughs> I for I actually forget like where it was that it was basically like that. This old village had to be built up because of that the radioactive lake had basically flooded the actual village village. Hmm. And I haven't looked at that one. Yeah, that it is a yeah, that it is a very 
shocking look whenever that the old woman just uh, is just walking it's just like giving him just a death glare i'm like mm. Ugh. i haven't seen that one like i it's weird i know a lot of people listen to like those lo-fi music channels as you know background noise i can't do those i don't know what it is i think it's like i need a certain kind of music to make my brain itch right <laughs> and it doesn't hit it for me I think it, I think that it is because that no offense to all of the lo-fi channels and stuff out there, it is kind of like the same problem that dubstep and EDM kind of does yeah. not have that same hit for me, that they use the exact same tempo and beat. You just yeah. uh, make the noises different. And see, I'm the older I get, the more I realize I'm not, uh, uh, it's not completely against, but my brain doesn't respond as well to slow music as it does to faster music. As I'm sure it's an ADD thing, but the the lo-fi, I'm just like, okay, okay, you need to spit it up, spit it up, and then, you know, I'm in my car listening to death metal. So. I'm, I'm sure that's an ADD thing, but... Yeah, Hugh just likes to watch people make things. So that he can get ideas to make things. Especially when uh, there are like the in the other channels I don't normally watch. So I was like, oh, you can make this for $500. I'm like, he's like, bet. Uh, I can, I bet I can, with the way you built this, it won't look as pretty, but I can make the exact same function for Unless uh, it's Jimmy and then you believe him. Well, Jimmy Duresta also will spend as little as he can to actually build it so he can keep the price down for other folks. He's also got how many years worth of working on TV scraps and around his place. This is true, but also this is, I'm trying to be better because I don't want to be the dude who just, uh, you know, saves every last thing. I, you like, don't have the space that Jimmy dressed has there. No, I, I don't. You don't have a barn. <laughs> I, I do not. What else you got? Uh, let's see. Uh, I we already kind of you already mentioned music. Me, if I'm listening to relaxing music, uh, I I will put on a to relax. I'll put on the sound of rain. That that's about it. Like I don't necessarily listen to music. You uh, slept for three hours today listening to that rain video. Yep. I used to do that before I found ASMR, but then the DD does not like my ASMR. No, 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 no. can't do ASMR except for very specific ones. Cannot do it. But any kind of slow music, I just go back to basically like just all of the, uh, all of like that the uh, slow just R and B with just like uh, John Legend, Ed Sheeran, just just a nice slow. Slow. It has been like a lot of love songs recently. Instead of instead in, instead of the stuff that my grandparents listened to, because I have this one memory of like everybody was just playing spades, and then that this song came on about that this guy with just some upbeat blues talking about I'm about to do the hokey pokey, and then I'm like, oh, <laughs> I'm like, you know, oh. it... <laughs> as an adult, I'm like, oh my god. What? Wow. You know, it brought up a memory for me, too. My parents, I don't think they do it anymore, but the entire time I was growing up, every night when my parents went to bed, they would they had a, a boom box, basically, in their room. And it was always the same music turned down very, very low, but it was, they listened to Yanni every single night. And it's, there's, it's, it's all instrumental. But it was that was how you knew mom and dad had gone to bed because you could hear the music. <laughs> you were near their room. But for me, it's uh, I listen to music more to concentrate. And I'll tell you which what I have found since I was in high school. One thing I know I can always put on to help me concentrate on what I'm doing is the soundtrack for the first Pirates of the Caribbean movie. I mean, for one thing, it's just, like, one of the best soundtracks there is. It's such a good soundtrack. 
but if I was studying or if I was working on the school newspaper back in high school and then into college, sometimes now if I really feel like I need the help, I will find it on YouTube and play it for myself really low. I would just put in that CD and I would play it. And if I got to the end of it and I was still working, I'd just start it back over again. <laughs> That's not really relaxing, but... Right, right. All right, let's see. So, everybody get out of D20. Ooh. Oh, damn. Okay. Uh, uh, crap. Yay. That's, what's that? that's a D12. Hang on. Dragon Eye Dice. Physical D Yes, I got it. Okay. I rolled an eleven. I rolled an eight. Yeah, that's an eight. Okay, you got an eight. Emily got an eleven. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay, I rolled a five. So, M, it is your chance to make us do a uh, insight check. Oh, God, I forgot about this. Didn't I do it last time? I can I can always give one to you if you want me to. I it, think I did it. I think I did it last time. I think you did. Yeah. Okay, so I'll throw one out for you all. Lou, uh, tell me if this is true or not. Louisiana is the only state to have not one, but two World's Fairs go bankrupt. I know one did. I'm going to say false? I am going to go with true. It's true. Well, Damn, I thought it was only one. <laughs> it's technically true. Because neither... Okay, it depends on who you ask what counts as a World's Fair or World's Expo. Because there are some that are not acknowledged. Like uh, the 1884 uh, World's Cotton Exposition went completely bankrupt because the Secretary of State or it might have been the Secretary of the Treasury, ran off with $1.7 million. Hmm. In 1800s money. Uh, and then in 1984, let's see. Yeah, the one in New Orleans. Uh, the 1984, the World of Rivers, uh, which is the reason why the Boardwalk Mall is where it is, because that was built for it. Uh, went completely bankrupt because they decided to house it in Louisiana and have it open in May and be open with open-air events in New Orleans in the summer. So, yeah, the, the, the big problem was 100%. They held the world's exposition in summer in New Orleans. Not the best choice. No. Not, the, not a good choice. So, but the the uh, the first one, the 1884 one, is how we got the Audubon Zoo. So, that is, uh, that is our little bit of insight and random fact uh, for this time. So, uh, thank you all very much for coming and uh, doing the, the round table. Uh, Thanks to the folks, because we got up to five or six at one point uh, mm -hmm. that came in listening about us, what we do to relax uh, when we're not playing uh, board games and uh, RPGs. Uh, let's see. This week is going to be a little bit... Well, no, it won't be. Uh, Monday, we are going to be doing brouhaha, since uh, Holy Winds is on hiatus. Excuse Boo! Me. 
Sorry, I got the hiccups. Uh, next three weeks, we're on hiatus. Yeah, next three weeks, killing, we're on hiatus. killing me. Uh, Redwell will be on hiatus uh, because, again, both those games have Claire, Moose, me, and Knox in them, and, uh, and Emily, and Cannon. And it, Redwell. And Topher. All, the folks in both those games are part of the wedding party or officiants or security for the wedding. <laughs> so we'll, we're going to, both those games will be on highest until after the wedding. Uh, Thursday, I think we're doing a online kind of talking about tears of Kairos and, uh, seeing if anybody might be interested in the, uh, the long-term monster of the week game, which is where I got my fact. Cause I was doing research for it. So, uh, we, we got that coming up. Uh, we'll do kitchen table next Sunday. Uh, because again, the weekend the kitchen table is supposed to happen on is Claire's wedding, and none of us are going to be wanting to do anything on Sunday evening. So, uh, that's what we got coming up. I'll turn it over to my lovely wife for the socials. Okie dokie. Thank you for anyone who joined us tonight. You can find us over on the Hellscape that is Twitter at, at bonus underscore team. Uh, we are also on Facebook. At Team Bonus Action on Instagram, Team Bonus Action. We are on YouTube as Team Bonus Action, where you can watch all of our previous games and podcasts and all of our extra stuff. We have a whole lot of videos over there if you want to catch up with anything we've been doing. We also have TeamBonusAction.com. All right, and since Knox is not here. Don't, Don't let me love. Love. Oh, That was so that was bad. So, <laughs> so close. Almost. I was trying to slow down and then it wouldn't work. Thank you for tuning in to another Bonus Roundtable podcast brought to you by Team Bonus Action. If you'd like to find more out about us, you can go to our website at teambonusaction.com or you can check us out on Facebook, Twitch, and YouTube as Team Bonus Action or on Twitter at bonus underscore team. And since Knox is not here, don't let your meatloaf.